This is the story of the most pocket-friendly computer tower. Sort of. It's more of a computer stick. Actually, that's what it's called. It's Intel's Compute Stick. Now, what can something so portable possibly be able to do? Let's find out. Intel sent over their engineering sample of the Compute Stick. In this package, you'll find the Compute Stick itself, an HDMI extension cable, power brick, micro USB cable, a few different adapters for the wall wart, and a quick start guide. Now, I would imagine that the retail version would pretty much be exactly like this, minus the brown box that says engineering sample. So just keep that in mind. At first glance, it's really hard to believe that there's an actual computer crammed inside of this housing. The external dimensions of the compute stick are 4 inches by 1.5 inches by half an inch thick. On the business end of the stick, you'll find the HDMI 1.4A connector. On the glossy top, you'll find some ventilation for the small fan that's crammed in there, an LED, and we also find a security notch that's basically kind of like a lanyard hole. How awesome is that? This thing is actually so light and portable, you can actually put it on a lanyard. Anyways, moving along, on one side we have a USB port, a micro USB power in port, some more ventilation, and the power button. And on the opposite side we find more ventilation and a micro SD slot. On the technical side of things, the Compute Stick comes with the Intel Atom Z3735F quad-core processor, Intel HD graphics, 2 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of eMMC flash storage, Bluetooth 4.0, wireless B, G, and N connectivity. All of this plus it comes with a full version of Windows 8.1 installed. What is the Intel Compute Stick meant for? The most obvious answer would be turning your regular HDMI equipped TV into a smart TV. Now I've talked about media hubs that turn your regular TVs into smart TVs before that also had Android and XBMC or, or Kodi or even Windows installed on them. But none of them came in this small of a form factor. On to what one can do with it. Through some testing on our wireless network, the Compute Stick was able to handle 1080p content from YouTube with maybe a slight hiccup here and there. And while the HDMI 1.4 connector is capable of displaying up to 4K and 30fps, the Wi-Fi wasn't able to keep up with streaming ultra high def content. Another use for the Intel Compute Stick would be a simple web browsing, emailing, and word processing PC for the people who like to have money in their bank accounts like students or the older generation of parents who do most of their computering on portable devices like tablets. I'm looking at you, Dad. The MSRP of the Compute Stick is $150, but if you intend on buying an LCD with speakers, a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard, $150 quickly jumps into double or triple that price. For the gamers out there who are curious, we thought we would try out Steam Game Streaming. Setup was simple enough, all we really needed to do was install Steam on the Compute Stick and log in. Steam pretty much took care of the rest. I tested out 4 games. First up was Assault Android Cactus. It's a dual joystick arcade style shooter. It wasn't a very graphically intense game so the Compute Stick didn't have much trouble in that department. However, having the single band wireless end connection, I did start to notice that from time to time that the game would stutter just a little bit. Next, I tried Mercenary Kings which is the 2D Metal Slug style action game. Mercenary Kings was perhaps the best game to run on the Compute Stick as I didn't notice any problems with it. Next up was CSGO. While the game is a bit more graphic intensive than Mercenary Kings, the Compute Stick did hold its own. But again, having single band Wi-Fi really gave the overall experience playing CSGO not so fun. Finally, I tried to stream Battlefield 4. I couldn't get this to work. I'm not sure whether it was an issue with Steam streaming or our network or the fact that the game had to be launched through Origin and then through an internet browser. It just would not cooperate. Perhaps this was just a sign not to try and play Battlefield on a dongle that costs $150. Alright, conclusion time. Now at first it might seem that such a small form factor is a godsend, but you do have to acknowledge some of the downfalls. There's no ethernet port and there's only one USB port. An extra USB port would have been really nice for those wanting to get this as a word processing slash emailing machine so that you have a whole range of actual wired keyboards and mice to choose from. But you can always just hook up a USB hub to plug in as many things as you want. In fact, that's actually what I did to play games after realizing that a Bluetooth keyboard just wasn't cutting it. But then again, you might end up with more clutter and I don't think Intel wanted you to use the stick in this way. Speaking of games though, streaming games from Steam would have definitely benefited from dual band wireless hardware, but simpler games didn't really suffer from slow network issues. 
using the compute stick as a media consumption device is definitely where it shines in terms of 1080p or lower content. The compute stick at the end of the day is like a tablet that doesn't come with its own screen. What it's able to handle in this form factor, for $150 it's actually well worth it. It even comes with a full version of Windows. I mean, if you really think about it, the price of Windows 8.1 alone is about $120. So for an extra $30, you pretty much get a super portable and compact computer tower. Well, kind of. And if Windows isn't your thing, the Compute Stick is also available in a Ubuntu flavor. What did you think of the Computer Stick? Is it a perfect space saving solution for the average computer user? Is the price fair? Leave a comment down below, we want to hear what you think. As always, thank you so much for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this from NCIX. We'll see you later.